Hello there, I'm artist Aaron Rutten, and in this video, I'm gonna answer some frequently asked questions about the new 2015 Wacom Intuos. This is the Intuos art, draw, comic, and photo. I've created a series of videos about these tablets, from an unboxing to a complete review of the Wacom Intuos art, and though I answered a lot of commonly asked questions in those videos, there's still a lot of questions getting asked in my comments, so I thought I'd address those today. But let me start by saying, if you have a tech support question, please email Wacom first before contacting me because the people at Wacom get paid to answer questions. In fact, part of the cost of your tablet goes towards paying those people. I, however, do not get paid to answer questions and it distracts me from making free YouTube videos like this. It takes much less time for you to search Google or look at the products on Wacom's website to compare the features and specifications than it does for you to write me a message and wait for a reply. If I can find this information about the tablets, you can too. So without further ado, let's start answering some questions. The first topic is which tablet to buy. So one of the questions I get the most is, I'm an artist or an animator or a comic artist or a 3D sculptor. Can I still use the Intuos comic art photo or draw for comics or animation or art or 3D? And basically what they're asking is, do you have to use the Intuos comic to make comic books or could you use the Intuos art to make comic books? And really the answer is all of these tablets will work great for any task. If you need software, then you might want to choose based on that. Otherwise, I would say the Intuos Art Medium is the best of this series because of its size. Really, the only difference between the tablets is the bundled software, the color options, and the touch feature. You can check out this chart for a comparison of each of the models. If you already have software, just choose based on size or color. Again, I think the Intuos Art Medium is the best because it's the largest. If you want something with more features that's a little more professional, you could also get the Intuos Pro. Or if you want a tablet with a built-in screen, you could choose a Wacom Cintiq. The next question I get fairly often is, how does blank compare to blank? You know, people say, how does the bamboo compare to the Intuos Pen & Touch? How does the Intuos Pen & Touch compare to the new 2015 Intuos Art and so on? And really the answer for this is just too subjective. Everyone's gonna have a different opinion of what the best tablet for them is. And really you have to decide that for yourself. Someone really can't tell you what the best tablet is for you. So what I recommend that you do is rather than ask me which tablet you should buy, go to Wacom's website, read the specifications or use my comparison chart and make that decision yourself. The next question is what size Intuos should I get for my screen? I think some people think that if you have a certain screen size that you need a certain tablet size, really it doesn't matter a whole lot. I've drawn with a really small tablet on a HD TV and it's a little bit harder to draw with a small tablet on a large monitor but you can still do it. So I would say it really doesn't matter a whole lot, but you should choose a larger tablet because it's easier to draw on no matter what size screen you have. So I would aim for something like a medium or a large if possible. Now these new 2015 Intuos models don't come in large, the Intuos Pro does. So let's move on to the next category of questions, which is hardware and operating system. First, is the tablet Windows or Mac compatible? And the answer is yes, it's compatible with both. These tablets can run on Mac OS or Windows 7, 8, 10 or later. Some older tablets might even run on older operating systems like Windows Vista and XP if you can find a legacy driver online. The next question is, will the Intuos work on a desktop or a laptop? And the answer is yes, it will work on both a desktop and a laptop computer. The tablets are compatible with any computer that runs Mac or Windows. The next question is, can I use a Wacom Intuos with a tablet or a Chromebook? The answer to that is only if that tablet runs Windows 7, 8, 10, or later, and it has a USB port. So if your tablet uses Chrome OS or Android, it's not going to work with the Wacom Intuos. The next question on our list is, how do you turn on the screen? And the answer to that is, you can't turn on the screen because this particular model of the Wacom Intuos does not have a screen. If you want a tablet with a built-in screen, then you need the Wacom Cintiq. And another variant of this question is, how do you see where you draw on a USB tablet without a built-in screen? And I know it seems kind of complicated, but you'll have your tablet in front of you and you'll be looking up at your computer monitor or your screen while you're drawing. It takes a little bit of practice to get down the hand-eye coordination, but it's not that hard. You should be able to do it within a week to a month. The next set of questions are about software. First, is there free software available to use with my tablet? Yes. Besides the software that comes bundled with the Intuos, there's a list of free software on my website. Krita, GIMP, and Inkscape are some well-known examples. 
The next question is, what software comes with the Intuos models? I have a list of that software here on this chart, but sometimes that software changes depending on your region or how long the tablet's been around. So it is subject to change. If you wanna know definitively what software comes with the tablet right now, you can go to Wacom's website and check out what they're offering. The next question is, is the tablet compatible with all software applications? The answer to that is yes, it will work with all software applications for the most part, but pen pressure is only compatible with software that supports pen pressure input, such as Corel Painter, ArtRage, Photoshop, Krita, Paint Tool Sci, Fire Alpaca, and most digital painting applications. Next on our list, is it possible to use the bundled software on multiple computers? According to Wacom's frequently asked questions, the bundled software can only be downloaded for use on one computer. However, other free software like Krita, for example, can be installed on multiple computers. The next category of questions are about the driver. The driver helps the tablet communicate with your computer, so you'll need to install that for the tablet to work. A commonly asked question I get is, do I need a CD or disk drive to install the driver? No, you do not. You can download that driver online. And in fact, it's better to download the driver online because it'll probably be newer than what you have on the disk. The next question is, where can I download the driver and is the driver free? Yes, the driver is free and you can download it from Wacom's website. You can do a Google search for Wacom drivers or you can pull it up on Wacom's website. That's wacom.com. And make sure that you check often for new driver updates. Next, let's answer some troubleshooting questions. Lately, I've been getting a lot of questions about the Wacom tablet not working or the Wacom tablet control panel not showing up. You'll wanna make sure that you've installed the latest driver for your tablet and that you've restarted your computer. If your tablet's still not working after restarting, you could try unplugging it from the USB port and plugging it into a different USB port. Another frequently asked question is about a warning message that says tablet driver was not found when you try to access the Wacom tablet properties. This also coincides with the pen pressure not working. And this happens because your computer has gone into sleep mode and when you wake up your computer, it messes up your Wacom tablet driver. So really the best thing to do is unless you need to have sleep mode enabled, just go ahead and disable sleep mode and rather than put your computer to sleep, just save all your work and shut down your computer. That's better for your computer anyways. That way when you're working, your computer won't go into sleep mode and your tablet won't have any problems. If you're getting this error message, the easiest thing to do is just restart your computer. If you don't wanna restart your computer, what you can do is you can restart the tablet service. To do that, you wanna hit the Windows key and then do a search for services. Then you'll wanna locate the Wacom Professional Service and then you can click the restart link to restart it or you can open that service and then you can manually stop and start it. If your digital painting application is open, you'll need to close that and reopen it and your pen pressure should be working again and you should be able to access the Wacom tablet control panel. Another commonly asked question is about pen pressure not working. There's a number of reasons why pen pressure might not be working. First, you can try unplugging your tablet and plugging it into a different USB port. That might fix the problem. You'll also wanna make sure that you're using the latest driver for your tablet, so you may need to update the driver. You could try restarting your computer. You could try resetting the Wacom Professional Service as I described in the last question. You can also open the Wacom Tablet Properties. And if you look under Options, there's an option for pressure compatibility, which can adjust the pen pressure for compatibility with older applications that only support 1024 pressure levels. You can try checking this and see if that makes a difference. You can also go to the Calibrate tab under your pen, and you can make sure that Windows Ink is checked because Photoshop, for example, needs Windows Ink to use pen pressure. You'll also wanna make sure that pen pressure is enabled within your digital painting application. For example, here in Photoshop, you can see I have pen pressure, but I can also turn that off with this little button here up at the top. If I click on this and now I try to draw, I have no pen pressure. So this might actually just be off. If you turn it on, then your pen pressure should come back. Same thing goes with opacity. If you wanna control the opacity pressure, you can do that as well. And then finally, you'll wanna consider whether or not the application you're using supports pen pressure because some applications do not support pen pressure. The next set of questions is about accessing the bundled software. The first is, where do I enter the code to download the free bundled software? You wanna to go to Wacom's website and go to the Getting Started Intuos page, and then you can scroll down to the middle of the page, you can see what software comes with the tablet, and you can register to redeem your bundled software. You'll wanna click here, and then you can register a new product, or if you've already registered a product in the past, you can sign in. 
Let's go ahead and click on register. It's asking, does your product come with a software bundle download key? You can locate that on the front flap of the box for your Intuos. I'm gonna go ahead and click on yes. And then you can enter your key here. If your key doesn't fit, make sure that you're entering the right key. And you'll also wanna make sure that you're in the correct region. Because if you're in Europe, you'll wanna select Europe rather than Americas. If you're in Asia, you'll wanna select Asia instead of Americas. Once you've entered your code, you can follow the rest of the instructions. It's going to ask you for the serial number on your tablet. You can find that on the back of your tablet underneath the little panel that slides off. Let's move on to the next category, which is about the stylus pen. The first question is, can I use a stylus pen from a different model of tablet? The answer to that is no, only the pen from the exact same model is going to work with your tablet. Now for this particular Intuo series, they use the same pen, so the pen for the Intuos Art would work for the Intuos Comic, and so on. However, a pen from an older model of the tablet, like the Intuos Pen & Touch, or the Intuos 5, or the Intuos 4, or the Intuos Pro, is not going to work on something like the Intuos Art, Draw, Comic, or Photo. The next question is about replacing the pen. If you lose your pen for your Intuos, you can buy a replacement pen from Wacom's website. The pen for this particular model of Intuos is LP190K. The next question is, how long should a nib last? The nibs are the little tips on your pen, and they're replaceable because they wear down from friction. For me personally, a nib lasts me about six months to a year, but it really depends on your technique. If you're drawing with a lot of friction, that's going to wear down your nib faster. I have several videos you can watch on nib wear and how to prevent it. The next question is, how come the cursor moves when I hover over the tablet? Can that be disabled? The answer is no, it actually should work that way because it would be a lot harder to control your tablet if you pressed down to move your cursor, then you'd also be making a line on your page. You need to be able to hover so that you can click on buttons and things without having to make a mark on your page. And the final category of questions is about touch. Touch is available on the Intuos Art, Comic, and Photo. It is not available on the Intuos Draw. And touch will let you do things like zoom in and out of your page, rotate your page, and it can replace your mouse. The first question about touch is, can touch be disabled? The answer is yes. There's a switch on the exterior of the tablet that can enable and disable touch, and you can also set one of your four express keys to turn touch on and off. The next question is, how come my touch is not working? The answer to that is you might have bought the draw version, which doesn't have touch, or it's disabled because of the switch on the tablet or the express key turning it on and off. Let's answer another commonly asked question. Is the touch feature necessary? My answer for that is, if you think it'll be helpful, then it probably will be. I personally use it here and there, but I could also live without it. And then the final question is, if I get the non-touch Intuos draw, can I still zoom using the express keys? And the answer to that is yes, you could set an express key to zoom in and out, or you could also just use your mouse or your keyboard shortcuts to zoom in and out. So that's it for my list of 2015-2016 Wacom Intuos Frequently Asked Questions. Again, if you have a question about tech support, please email Wacom. And if you have any more questions about comparing the tablets or which tablet to buy, go to Wacom's website, read their features and specifications and compare the tablets, or go to my website and check out my recommendations and my comparison chart and make that decision yourself. If you found this information helpful, take a quick second to like this video. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to click that subscribe button because I have a ton of tutorials that'll teach you how to draw with your Wacom tablet. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.